We are going to be looking for undervalued sectors in this video. And to be more specific, let me tell you that there are two sectors and five stocks which I personally think are getting into the undervalued territory. They are the chemical sector and the IT sector. Now let me give a little disclaimer regarding chemistry. This subject has been a nightmare for me throughout my student life and usually I prefer avoiding the chemical sector. But retail investors really want to know what's going on in this sector. So I'll do my best presenting the stocks to you. And the stocks I will be discussing will be from an investing perspective and not from a trading perspective. Hence the minimum holding period should be around 5 years. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Namaste and welcome to Retail Investing. So stock number one is Naveen Florin and it is from the chemical sector. Before we get into discussing the stocks, let me share one concept with you and this is the concept of sector rotation. And based on this concept, I am trying to find the undervalued sectors. So sector rotation is simply the movement of big money from one sector to another and it is connected to the economic cycles. Right now, it looks like a lot of money has moved out of the chemical and the IT sectors. So common sense tells us to look for undervalued stocks in these two sectors. Now let's get back to Navin Florin. So here is the chart. As you can see, the stock has seen massive corrections in the the last one month and the stock is trading way below its 200 day moving average. So what is the reason behind this big correction? Actually there has been a resignation from the top management. The managing director has recently left the company and the market is not liking that. Now if this is a red flag there is no point in wasting time studying the company but it does not look like a red flag and let me explain why. So the company has different CEOs for different verticals which are specialty chemicals, high performance products and contract development manufacturing organization. So the managing director's resignation is not going to affect the operations of the company. The market has probably overreacted to this event and there could be even more volatility in the short term. Now let's have a look at the financials. As you can see, the stock is trading very close to its 52 week low and it has corrected by more than 30% from its 52 week high of 4950 rupees. The return on capital employed is 20.4% and the return on equity is 18.2%. These are very good numbers. Now compared to the cash reserves of 2175 crore rupees, the debt of 861 crores is quite small and the debt to equity ratio is only 0. 0.39. Promoters have placed a small number of shares which is 3.15%. The current ratio is 2.75 and the quick ratio is 1.85. So it passes the basic safety checks but the question is, is it undervalued? If you look at the price to earnings multiple and compare it to the industry average, the stock does not look undervalued at all. Then why is it on my list? Well, real value in a company comes from the future cash flows. And the main reason why I think its future cash flows are going to grow is its capex plans. For the specialty chemical segment, they are building a new plant at Dahej Gujarat by the end of this year. It will cost around 540 crore rupees. In the HPV segment, they are doing capacity expansion for their client Honeywell. They are also exploring opportunities in the EV battery space and the solar energy space. Hydrofluoric acid is used as a raw material for these industries and Naveen Fluorin is going to produce a lot of that. There is also a new plant coming up for producing the R32 gas. R32 is used in ACs and refrigerators. Now they have other capex plants as well but I cannot get into all the details without making this video extremely long. And it looks like it might take up to 2028 for all the benefits of the capex to become visible. Even after doing so much capex, the debt to equity ratio is only 0.39 and as per calculations, it is not supposed to go above 0.7. This looks impressive to me. Stock number two is Deepak Fertilizers. Here is the chart. In the last one year, the stock has corrected by more than 33% and the stock is trading very close to its 200 day moving average. So this company produces certain chemicals like nitric acid and liquid carbon dioxide. Now I am not going to name all the chemicals produced by them because I cannot. To make an investment decision, all I need to know is that which industries actually use the chemicals produced by this company. The pharmaceutical industry, inks, coatings, cosmetics and the agrochemical industry use the chemicals produced by Deepak fertilizers. So all these industries are growing 
Hence, Deepak fertilizers also have growth potential. So here is the financial overview of the company. The market cap is roughly 8,000 crore rupees, which makes it a small cap company. The price to earnings multiple is 9.07 compared to the industry average of 28.8. Now this suggests that this stock is quite undervalued compared to its peers. The return on capital employed is 25.8% and the return on equity is 27%. Whenever debt is high, the return on equity figures actually get a little in Inflated. In case of this company, the debt is 3699 crore rupees and its reserves are 4941 crore rupees. The current ratio is 1.56 and the quick ratio is 1.11. The debt to equity ratio is 0.73. Promoters have pledged 14.5% of their shares. So overall, it passes the basic safety checks. And as per the ratios, the stock actually looks undervalued. This company is also doing some capex and is building an ammonia plant. The compound ammonia is used in industries like leather, rubber, paper, food and beverage. Again, this is not a chemistry class, but if you want to invest in the chemical sector, you need to study a little bit. So Deepak Fertilizers has been doing backward integration. And what happens in backward integration is that the company takes control of more of the supply chain. Now let me explain with a small example how that works. Suppose I have a shop where I sell wheat bread. Now if I were to do backward integration, I would try to acquire a farm and produce my own wheat. Backward integration can reduce costs by achieving economies of scale, increase production and reduce costs. That is the basic idea. The combination of capex and operational efficiency is a great one for making large profits. Stock number three is SRF. So here is the chart. As you can see, this stock has not corrected that much from its previous peak compared to the other stocks. Its 52 week high is 26.40 rupees and it is currently trading just below 2200 and the stock is trading below its 200 day moving average. SRF is the market leader in the refrigerant space. The product verticals are fluorochemicals and special specialty chemicals. So it's a direct competitor to Navin Fluorine and out of the two, I would prefer Navin Fluorine and the reason lies in the financials. So here is the financial overview of the company. It's a large company compared to the others and the market cap is 64,475 crore rupees. So it's a mid cap company. The price to earnings multiple is 37.2 compared to the industry average of 28.8. The return on capital employed is 22.4% and the return on equity is 22.8%. The company has large debt of almost 5,000 crore rupees and this has the potential of inflating the return on equity. However, the reserves are much higher at 10,554 crore rupees. The current ratio is 1.06 which is fine and the quick ratio is 0.62. Now this number suggests that the company has some issues with its inventory. The promoters have not pledged any of their shares which is a good sign. Here is the revenue sources for SRF. The chemical business contributes 50% to its revenues. Packaging films 34%, technical textile 13% and others 3%. So SRF has been doing both forward and backward integration. Now the concept of backward integration has just been explained. So let me explain forward integration in short. So what happens in forward integration is that the company takes control of the distribution system. Suppose I'm an artist and I sell my embroidery designs through boutiques. If I were to do forward integration, I would open my own retail store and become the distributor of my own product. SRF has announced massive capex plans of 15,000 crore rupees in between financial year 2024 and 2028. So the company is expecting a lot of growth in the next five years. Stock number four is Deepak Nitrite and it is also from the chemical sector. Only one stock from the IT sector will be featured in this video and I'll explain why in a moment. So here is the chart of Deepak Nitrite. The price has corrected roughly 16% from its previous peak and the stock is trading below its 200 day moving average. Here is the financial overview. The market cap is roughly 27,000 crore rupees, which makes it a mid cap company. Price to earnings multiple is 35.3, which is a little more than the industry average of 28.8. The return on capital employed is 29.7% and the return on equity is 22.7%. The company has a tiny debt of 72.9 crore rupees and has huge reserves of 4,000 crore rupees. The current ratio is 2.98 and the quick ratio is 1.85. The promoters have not pledged any of the shares. Now Deepak Nitrite has a very impressive clientele and it includes companies like Reliance Industries, Indian Oil, Unilever, and the beauty brand L'Oreal. When it comes to capex plans, the company has doubled their production capacity. And even after that, they're acquiring more land 
at Dahej Gujarat and at Hyderabad. Stock number 5 is Emphasis and finally a stock from the IT sector. Now the reason why I included only one IT stock in the list is because the large well-known IT companies like Infosys and TCS are also borderline undervalued. Everyone knows them and everyone talks about them and that's why I excluded them. So here is the chart of emphasis. As you can see, the price has massively corrected in the last 18 months and currently it is trading at its 200 day moving average. The company provides cloud services and cognitive services. Its clientele includes 6 of the top global banks, 11 out of 15 top mortgage lenders and 3 top global insurance companies. Here is the geographical revenue breakdown of the company. 82% of the revenues come from America, 10% from Europe, Middle East and Africa and 8% from rest of the world. So here is the financial overview. The market cap is almost 40,000 crore rupees which makes it a mid cap company. The price to earnings multiple of 24.8 is a little lower than the industry average of 27.3. The return on capital employed is 28.9% and the return on equity is 21.9%. It has a debt of 1580 crore rupees and reserves of 7722 crore rupees. Both the current ratio and the quick ratio are 1.85. The promoters have not pledged any of their shares. So there is going to be a lot of future demand for the company's cloud and cognitive services business but as of now there is recession like situation in America and Europe which is driving down the demand for its services and this has been reflected in the stock price but once economic recoveries begin the company's long term prospects look good. So these were the two sectors which I think are getting into the undervalued territory now. Now the companies from the chemical sector are actually looking quite confident. At a time when the chemical sector is heavily beaten down and the demand for their products is very low, these companies have announced massive capex plans. This means that they are confident that demand will go up in the future. Now that's one reason to be bullish on the chemical sector. But retail investors must consider the risk before making any investment decisions. In my opinion, the chemical sector faces two main risks. Risk number one is demand slowdown in North America and Europe which is the case at the moment. And risk number two is dumping from China. When domestic demand slows down in China, they like to dump their chemicals into India. Now government policies like anti-dumping duty can actually reduce this risk but retail investors should not ignore it. It takes a lot of skill to make money in the stock market by taking advantage of sector rotation and the capital cycles. But more than skills, what investors require is patience. Patience is the superpower that is needed the most in the stock market. Because money does not move out from one sector and get into another sector overnight or over a period of few weeks or months. It takes time. Now guys, please remember that this video was purely for educational purposes and do not consider any of this as a buy or sell recommendation. You must do your own research before you make any investment decision. Now if you found anything valuable in this video, please like and share. And if you don't want to miss future videos on investing, please subscribe. Thank you very much for joining and I'll see you in the next one. Jai Hind.